Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by our friends at Manscaped. Their Lawnmower 3.0 is a revolutionary electric trimmer that won't nick or snag your nuts. So go to manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping. I like the OnlyFans lets you pick the thumbnail now for the video. They never did that. And mine always, all my videos started with a black screen. Mine too. It started with an yeah, intro. I feel, yeah. So it was always a black always. screen and people were like, there's no video there. I'm like, no, there, there is. is. You, just you just have to, play. yeah. I I would, uh, I started because of that because I also like I put a fade in and a fade out on my videos. Yeah. I started putting, like I would upload the, a frame grab still that I had selected and, and then into the, the, video. Of the video. the video. That's a good idea. That That's wasn't what I, what I was I would doing. re-edit it. Re-edit it and add a, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I would just like pull a frame grab, upload, because you can upload multiple pieces of media right. at a time. So I would upload like the still and then the video. So they'd right. see the still, then they'd have to click the little arrow to play the video. Yeah. I used to re-edit it and, and put it up. And put yeah. a thumbnail in the front because it made me insane. Yeah. Yeah. And then like your vault is full of black videos. And I'm yeah. like, great. This people is are, so helpful. Yeah. People are like, Thank I, you. what? They can't watch any of this. So. Yeah. Now you have to press the button. Okay. But we could do a whole episode complaining about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I could do a whole episode just about complaining. I was going to say, I was talking to a friend this morning, a friend of mine who's a performer is staying at my house. She lives in Vegas and she mm -hmm. comes and crashes in my guest room when she's in town. And she was complaining about her shoot yesterday. And then like, she complained for like five minutes and then was like, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't be complaining. I'm really grateful I'm working. And this director is actually really cool. She just has really long tees. And like, I, I'm like, I get paid and then like, I feel really bad. And I was like, no, it's just like part of the yeah. process. Yeah. Is that like sometimes it feels good to complain for five minutes? Yeah. No, yeah. I think it's I think it's important. I think it's important to complain. It's important to be grateful, yes. but also to like let that steam off and like I, I mean, love complaining. I love complaining. I love complaining. Complaining's my favorite. I love just like taking <laughs> taking a few minutes to just like bleh out yeah. my feelings and then be like, okay, I feel better. Yeah. I complained. Yeah. Even if it's completely irrational. Just yeah. like bleh. There it goes. And as a producer and director, you have so much more to complain about now because so many moving parts that can go wrong. You're not wrong. It was a very good segue. You're not wrong. <laughs> I, this is, this is, and I haven't even introduced you yet. Once again, Ernie, I think we're going to have to do a fade in on the intro. I'm not doing a proper intro because we started talking about, we just started about, talking. We just started talking, but that's okay. Feels very organic. Welcome to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today I have the undisputable queen of directing and performing Casey Calvert. And, um, I'm Hello. so excited to have her here. Should I say hi to a camera? Which camera? Am that I would be your camera. You can say hi to hi. that camera. <laughs> <laughs> now that I made it weird. <laughs> <laughs> I made it so weird. It's okay. I'll just complain about it later. Yeah, exactly. Well, you're editing, be like, oh, Casey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, if you haven't seen my previous episode with Casey, um, it was before she started kind of down this directing path that she's very firmly on right now. Yeah. Um, so if you want to learn about her performing, how she got into the industry, that whole backstory, go watch or listen to my previous episode with Casey Calvert. Because today we are going to talk about this new journey of yours, which yes. is directing. Yes. Or complaining. Or complaining. Or both. No, I've been complaining for many more years than I've been directing. Do you have more to complain about with directing or performing? Ooh. Directing. Producing. Yeah. Produ that's the producing. thing. Producing. Because in our industry, you're both. If you're right. the director, you're, you're also, also the, the producer. producer. A lot. I think a lot of people don't realize that. I think a, like a lot of people – I mean, I also I think like – the mainstream definitions of director and producer are really vague and like producer is this weird yeah. ambiguous word that that like people outside of the business don't really know what that means right but then like if you do know what that means in porn you're both yeah like i don't uh i can think of one person who is actively directing who i think is not also producing their movies right I think I don't. I don't actually. I think know. I. I think I know who you're talking. Probably. about. Probably is it somebody who has an unlimited budget? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you 
have an yeah. unlimited budget, you, you can, can hire, hire somebody yeah, to, do to do all, do all that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like I have a production manager. Yeah. But like Same. still the producer. Yeah. yeah. You still got to like come up with all of the it's just like, and especially because you've been in the industry for so many years, it's like all of this intrinsic knowledge that you yeah. have about locations right. and performers mm-hmm. and, very and agents and all of it. All of yeah, that. all of it. It's actually really hard to have someone do that stuff for me because I have tried mm-hmm. to delegate some of that production work to people. Yeah. And it's really hard. Yeah. It's like insider baseball. Yeah. It's just... What is the hardest part for you in in terms of let's say producing? Like, what do you? What is the biggest challenge for you? Uh, two immediate things come to mind. One is that because I'm also directing, balancing this like I have to book my movies a couple months in advance to get the people I want, but I don't have a script yet, mm-hmm. and so balancing like booking crew and being like, we're going to make a movie. I'll tell you about it later. And then booking talent and being like, we're going to make a movie. I'll tell you about it later. (laughs) (laughs) And so like doing things kind of out of order in that way and having to worry about producing while I'm doing things like trying to write a movie. Right. But then like to be more specific locations are so hard. It's locations. Are, I was like, when you said that, I'm like, one of, of those, my existence. one of those is locations. It's so, so hard. Cause I just don't want to shoot at a porn house. Mm-hmm. There's so few porn houses anyway, these days. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're booked months in advance. Yeah. Especially and now that fucking Brad Armstrong left for the goddamn yeah, Bahamas. Yeah. He had the best porn he had house. A great ha- yeah. He had a great house and like a great pool. Yeah. But like, you, the porn. I feel like the most of the porn houses right now are set up to be porn houses, and so they just have a bunch of random bedrooms, and they're not White furniture. Yeah, and they're not conducive to storytelling. Yeah, and it's not like I have the art department budget to like completely redecorate Jill's house. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which, by the way, could use some redecorating. Could use some redecorating. <laughs> Um, so it's, so I have to find locations that are not your standard porn location. And then I have to be like, this is what we do. One of the really nice things about working for Erica Lust is that I can say we're making a movie for Erica Lust. And a lot of people know what that is and Mm -hmm. what that means. Mm -hmm. And that has opened a lot of doors for me when I think being like, I'm making a porno would have closed a door being like. I'm making a film for Erica Lust has opened one. Yeah. That makes so much sense because when I have to apply for locations, because like Twisty specifically for like their treat of the month, they want something that's like new and fresh and different because they want very unique concepts. It's a little easier for the treat of the month solo because it is a girl by herself, which is is easier. It's so so much easier, easier, but not easy. Not easy. No, it's not easy, but it is easier when it's not a penis and a vagina. Exactly. And so I have to, I have this whole spiel Mm -hmm. that I send them. Like I shoot high end, Mm -hmm. like cinematic, artistic Mm -hmm. erotica. Mm -hmm. And like the word erotica is so much better than the word pornography. No, don't want to use that word. People don't like the word pornography. Mm -hmm. That says like, you're going to leave jizz on their pillow. (laughs) Which, by the way. But, like, people do that. Like, that's also why this is so hard is because, like, there have been people in the past who have done things like left jizz on the pillow. (laughs) It makes me so mad. Like, you could take care of a location. It would make our life so much easier. It's those unthoughtful jizzers. Yeah. Who have made (laughs) our jobs so difficult. Mm -hmm. It's all of you pillow jizzers Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that have absolutely ruined Mm -hmm. my and Casey's ability to find good locations. And, like, I know you're on, like, you're, I know you're on a budget, too. Yep. Like I have what I consider to be an incredibly generous budget for mm-hmm. my features compared to porn budgets. Yep. My budget is incredibly generous. Yeah. I still can't pay 10 grand for a house for a day or something. Yeah. You know, I can't like there, there's still this wall of like, I need a house I can afford. Yeah who will let me shoot sex there. Because I have found a lot of houses that have been affordable until I tell them that we're going to shoot sex. Yeah. 
And then they think that because it's porn, we have millions of dollars. And they go, oh, well, that $1,000 a day actually is $5,000 a day. And then I go, well, I guess now you have $0 a day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's funny, actually, because I got an email from browsers just this mor- morning saying, hey, by the way, I just wanted to see if like you came across any like great new locations and we could like kind of like build showcase ideas around them, you know, no. anything different, no. retro, no. futuristic. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's a no. No. <laughs> um, no. Absolutely not. I wish, but it's, it's I got so, nothing. And like, it's, it's just, it's, yeah, it's really hard. Tell me, so it's funny when people ask me for um, like horrible, like set stories, like crazy set stories, it's always about the location. Like some disaster happens with the location. So okay. do you have any like location nightmare no, stories? No, knock on wood. Oh. Um, I've been very lucky. Yeah. Um, like location disaster, like. Like. I've heard. Okay. Yes. I've heard like. Like Would the, you like a location like disaster Like the kid story? comes home or something like that. <laughs> like I have heard like they, the, like the babysitter came home early with the toddler and like. <laughs> Yes, give me a give me your your favorite location um, disaster. Let's see, story. I got a couple of location disaster stories. So let's see. Oh, my favorite one is I was shooting Celeste Star and Lux Cassidy from my website, and I don't know if you remember this, but there was this house in the valley, which was it was off of like. Morning wood is not the right word, but it was something, <laughs> morning something or wood something. I don't okay. know. It was like in Sherman Oaks. It was beautiful. It had okay. an indoor pool. It I was don't like remember absolutely ever a house stunning. with an indoor, an indoor pool. So I shot there once a while back for Digital Playground. Okay. And I didn't get a permit like sure. most people don't. Sure. And uh, I guess Digital Playground had been shooting there. Like I was just shooting pictures. I was shooting yeah. for magazines back then. And I guess Digital Playground had been shooting a bunch of movies there like okay. all week and like taking up all the parking and being loud and, being and obnoxious, obnoxious. And not and being polite to the neighbors and the neighbors were pissed. called. So the day that I happened to be shooting there, the neighbors called the cops. Yep. They came in yep. and they said, do you have a permit? And I was yep. like, what's the well, permit? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they, they shut down the shoot. Yeah. So then the house ended up like changing hands. There was like a different person living there. And then a different location agent came to me with the property saying, okay. hey, this is available, available. for rent. And sure. I was like, oh my God, I love this house. Yeah. I I'm had so a problem excited. there yeah. once with a, with a, um, with the neighbors and not having a permit. So I'm going to pull a permit if I'm okay. going to shoot there okay. because it was really stunning. And he was sure. like, okay. So I pulled a permit. Yeah. I paid the money. I yeah. You did the thing. Did all the thing. So we were shooting there on a Friday and then again on a Monday. Okay. So the guy who was living there, who I thought was the owner. Yeah. Um, but I found out later what was wrong mm-hmm. was an NBA player for like Kentucky or something like that. Okay. I don't know. Anyways. I, yeah. So he was this NBA player and he was there on Friday and we shot there Friday. Everything went great. No problems. Okay. And he was like, okay, um, I'm leaving this weekend to go play somewhere. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to like leave the key with the location agent. You guys just let yourself in on Monday and go ahead and I'll shoot on Monday. Like this was kind okay. of like organized with the location agent. That seems fine. Seems fine, that right? Seems fine. So we come back Monday. <clears throat> So first of all, we get there and I guess like he'd let his friends like throw a party there over the weekend. That is exactly where I thought you might be going with this story. <laughs> no, but it, it also gets worse. Okay. Like other things happen after that. Okay. So I get there and there's just like people crashed out all over the house, oh, like sleeping God. on couches. Like there's rails of Coke everywhere. Oh there's God. like fucking empty <laughs> vodka bottles, like people oh. like sleeping in the bed. I mean, so I have to go like wake all these like big dudes up. And be like, excuse me, Sorry, you need I'm to leave. Money I'm to be shooting here. a porn here today. And so it takes me like an hour to kick everyone out of the house. <laughs> and then I had to also clean up. Yeah. So then we finally start shooting. And this random guy walks in with like this old Persian couple. And I'm like, who are you? And he's like, who are you? And I'm like, well, I'm renting this space. And he was like, from who? And of course, this like couple yeah. like, what's going on? What's going on? on? Yeah. Um, and so he's like, well, I'm the realtor and this house is on the market. And the owner had me come show this place today. And I was like, well, I don't know anything Uh, about that because I rented it from so-and-so. And And he's like, that is not the owner. 
He's like a temporary oh renter. Oh God. And I was <laughs> Had like. Had been listing it with a proper location agent. Right. This guy was super shady, by the way. Yeah. So, um, so he's like, okay, well, I'm going to call. He's like, do you have, I'm like, I have a permit. Yeah. Look, I have a permit. Look, yeah. Look, it's legit. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and he's like, well, do you have a contract with the owner? And I was like, well, no, because I, I thought have a this person with was this the, person who has been saying that he is the person. So they call that property. guy and he denies knowing who I am <gasps> or how I got there. He says he has no knowledge of who I am. He's never heard of me before. And oh my God. Yeah. So they call. Were the, you doing a feature? No, thank God. Okay. So they call the cops on me for trespassing. Oh my God. And they're like, we're going to have you arrested. I'm like, but I but have like a you permit. pulled a permit on a property. While you were telling this story, I remembered a location horror story that I have had that I blocked out because it's more funny than anything else. (laughs) But like, was this, was this a house? No, this was in Sherman Oaks. Mm -hmm. And I feel like so many problems happen with houses in the hills. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, they called the cops. I packed my van faster than than you could fucking imagine. And we got the fuck out of there. Run away. (laughs) <laughs> run oh my God. away. I ran away so fast. Run away. I, yes, I have been on, on sets as a performer multiple times where the cops have been called. Mm-hmm. I hid in the bathroom once. Like we had like the knock, knock, knock on the door, like while sex was happening. Oh yeah. And we're like ever, like. And it's, it's always don't in the bathroom. The door. Oh yeah. It's don't, don't answer, answer the, the door. door. Go hide. Go hide in the bathroom. Like we hid me and the, it was a boy, girl, girl scene. We hid in the bathroom. <laughs> We like didn't have our fucking clothes because we were in the middle of sex. <sighs> I felt the male talent is like my penis. <laughs> and we were just like so flipped out and like we had been there all day and like we had like 10 minutes left to shoot. The cops eventually left that like they walked around with their flashlights and we didn't open the door. So they left and we yeah. finished the scene. But like I have had issues with neighbors. Yeah. And, like, a crazy neighbor. And I guess a, a house that I had rented that, like, had previously had some porn shot there. And also, like, the homeowner was really creepy. And I would never mm-hmm. go back there. Like, he touched my butt at one point. Oh, God. And, like, was, like, at one point we were, like, it's a closed set. Goodbye. I hate having to tell And we that. had to, like, remove him from the property because he was being – he was making my performers uncomfortable. Yeah. But the neighbor there, like, got home and was belligerent drunk as we were wrapping out and was like, I'm telling the homeowner that you guys are – and we weren't shooting sex at this house. Oh, wow. Was it just dialogue? It was just dialogue. It was for season one of Primary. It was just dialogue. So we had pulled a permit, but we had maybe omitted, like, what – you know, when you pull a permit and – Everything but, about it. But here's but the like, thing. Like, we, on the so permit, like, it asks about, like, nudity and sex. Yeah, You're not shooting that. I wasn't so shooting it. Why does it matter? So we were like, we're not. And he was like, all those fucking whore. And was just like, like, threw a, a beer bottle, like, at my at my production designer, who I was like, do not go fight. Oh, no. No fighting. No fighting. Do not go fight. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, and then we had to go back the next day. And, like, we went back the next day and we shot. And also, but also like this guy, like it was like midnight. He came home in an Uber, like was so drunk that like as the Uber was coming back down the hill, cause had to like go up to make a U-turn to mm. come back. Like we, the Uber driver was like, I'm sorry. He's really, really wasted. And we're like, no, we're really sorry that you had to drive him home. Yeah. So it was just, but like, I just wouldn't go shoot that house again. Yeah. But like, I've never, I've never knock on wood lost my day. I've lost my day for other reasons. Right. I've had talent like morning of and stuff like that and like have lost my day. Everyone's had that happen. But I have never because of a location. Yeah. Knock on wood because it's going to happen. It's This is not an if, but this is a when this happens. Like yeah. knock on wood. And again, like that's another amazing thing about working for Erica is that like she gets it. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I'm going to a company and being like – I lost my day and I got to pay kill fees and they're like sucks to be you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's so helpful to have somebody who's actually a director yeah. um, kind of in charge of production. Because you're right. They get yeah, it. Gets like, it. Yeah. And when I have lost days and had to, like, pick days back up have always been incredibly accommodating. Yeah. That's so important. All right, guys. Hang tight. We will be right back. Got Bush? You definitely do if you haven't started using the products from my sponsor, Manscaped. 
Since I've started working with Manscaped, they've really expanded on their product line. It's incredible. So of course we've got the Lawnmower 3.0, their revolutionary electric body trimmer, which is not only cordless, but it's also waterproof. So you can actually use it in the shower. They also have the Crop Preserver and the Crop Reviver, a ball deodorant and a ball toner to keep your balls smelling nice and fresh. And if you get their perfect package, you will not only get the aforementioned ball toner and ball deodorant, but you will also get, of course, the electric trimmer, a shed travel bag, and their boxer briefs, which are the most comfortable boxer briefs you will ever wear. You can get all of this for 20% off at manscaped.com by using my code HRU. That's 20% off at manscaped.com by using my code HRU. Hey guys, so we are back. So tell us a little bit about um, like how you started on this journey of directing. Like when did you think that this was something that you wanted to achieve? What was your first like kind of taste of directing? It's like if you want to be really broad with the answer to this question. Like I went to film school. I have a degree in film production. So like making movies was always a thing for me. Mm -hmm. But as a an adult specifically, I never necessarily wanted to be a director. It wasn't mm -hmm. like I started performing and was like, one day I'll be a director. Mm -hmm. um, but life happens. Mm -hmm. and things happen in the business. And then one day I woke up to an email from Brie Mills who asked if I wanted to direct for Girls Way. Mm -hmm. In the summer, like July-ish of 2019, Erica started Less Cinema, mm -hmm. and she made her first film for Less Cinema. She had been doing X Confessions, which are short films, but she wanted to do features. Mm -hmm. Um, and so she flew me to Barcelona to be in her movie, along with a couple of other American performers. Um, and I met her there. And I figured, like, I, I knew who she was. I figured either we're going to get along amazing or this is going to be a week from hell and we're going to mm -hmm. fight the whole time. Because she's a strong woman. Because she's a strong woman. Yeah. Turns out it was amazing. We got along amazing. It was, like, one of the best features I've ever been on as a performer. What was it? Uh, it was called The Intern. Okay. Um, and what I have come now to know later is that we did a lot of BTS and like a really in-depth BTS interview. And one of the questions they were asking people on set was, who do you think should direct for Less Cinema? Mm -hmm. And they all said my name. Oh, wow. Which is just like. Which that doesn't surprise me at all. But And like I had been directing a little bit, but I had been, you know, I had been directing scenes like mm -hmm. I hadn't you know and but like they said my name and I was like okay and like I was told this later it's so like I didn't know this information while I was still in Spain mm -hmm. uh then I came home still directing for for Gamma for Girls Way uh Erica and her husband come to LA to do some promo and to just like get more involved in the American industry and the Los Angeles industry because they were very isolated in Europe. Mm -hmm. And part of La Cinema and like the goals of La Cinema was to branch out into the United States mm -hmm. and the American market. Mm -hmm. So they were here. They invited my husband, Bryn, and I over for dinner. I was like, okay. Like by this point, I had heard through the grapevine that people had been suggesting me. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, I'm going to go, we're going to have dinner, we're going to have wine, or, you know, we're going to eat, and, you know, I'm going to, at the end of this dinner, I'm going to be like, hey, you know, I've been directing, and, you know, maybe, like, the very, what I now realize is, like, the American way of doing business about being like, we're going to eat dinner for three hours and drink wine, and then maybe we'll talk about business. Mm -hmm. That is not what happened. They go over to the house, we sit down, they pour wine, and they're like, so, we'd like you to direct for less cinema. And I was like, but I had a whole plan of how I was going to pitch myself. <laughs> but that's just the way that they do business is like very direct. I actually really like it. Like this European way of doing business. Mm -hmm. of like you just like say what you need and what you want and then you do it. Mm -hmm. It works really well. There's none of this American accoutrement about like the Oreo method and like don't forget to give, you know, constructive criticism. It's just like that's bad. Yeah. 
Oh, you mean the compliment sandwich? The compliment sandwich. Which is, by the way, <laughs> my secret weapon. I love the com- I love it. No one but does like, a compliment sandwich like you do I a do. Good, I have to a say, good compliment I'm, sandwich. I'm an excellent compliment sandwich. So, like, sandwich they don't do that. It took a while to get used to because, like, I'm used to receiving a compliment sandwich. <laughs> Should we explain what a compliment sandwich is? Sure. To who so, don't like, know? a compliment sandwich is like a business technique that I have now come to realize is like a very American business technique where you say a compliment about someone's work. Your movie, was, your movie looked really beautiful. Your sound sucks, but don't worry, I really loved the story. <laughs> It's like a very basic compliment. compliment but the meat, the meat of, of the, the sandwich, and it's usually an email. Like this is usually an email yeah. communication thing. So like you put like a compliment, your criticism, but a compliment at the end, and then people feel good. Yeah, and it like softens it. They don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but so Erica asked me to direct. They told me they wanted a three scene series, and gave me a number for a budget. Mm-hmm. It was like a loose number. Mm-hmm. I thought about what I wanted to do. I came back to them with a six scene series and a budget three times the amount of the number that they gave me because I was just like, you know what? I wrote the thing. Like mm-hmm. I wrote, I wrote the, this whole thing. If this is how much it's going to cost to do this right. Mm-hmm. I really love this thing I wrote. If they don't like it and they don't, or they don't want to spend this much money on it, that is fine. I will write something else for the budget that they gave me. Right. Instead, they said, go for it. And that was season one of Primary. Wow. And that was October of 2019. Wow. Were you so surprised when they said that? Oh, yeah. I was I was 70% sure that they were going to be like, we need something with a smaller budget. Yeah. Because that's what I'm used to in porn. That's what porn Absolutely, is. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was season one of Primary, shot season one of Primary, figured out a workflow and like learned a lot and actually took a really long time to deliver. It took like eight months to deliver it. Okay. So um, tell us like what But also like COVID happened in the meantime. Uh, yeah, that doesn't help, does it? So like that was October of 2019. I also moved in the meantime, which is like a whole different mm-hmm. thing that happened in my life. So that happened like and lest I had been talking with them about making more movies and then COVID happened. And we just like finished primary really slowly because of COVID and let you know, everything's all up in the air. Mm-hmm. I'm doing these digital shoots for Gamma, doing Zoom movies and stuff, which was actually, like, an interesting learning experience and, like, how to direct when you're not in the room with somebody and, like, also paid my bills during COVID. So, like, very grateful. Yeah. And then finally it felt safe enough to start making some very contained movies Mm -hmm. for Lust. That was, like, fall of 2020. We actually, like, would collect people and take them to a place mm-hmm. and shoot a movie there. So, like, no one could leave. Like, you're trapped to this house. You're sleeping at this house. How, like, how many days are we talking? A week. Oh, uh, wow. Five days. Five days. Okay. Not a full. And so everyone's, like, like got to get tested before. Yeah, everyone gets tested mm-hmm. before. Everyone drives there. Then we have, like, this massive house in the woods where, like, mm-hmm. there's a place for everybody to stay and everybody to shoot and just, like, kept everybody very contained. And then no one wanted to go home, which was really sweet. Yeah. Like, myself included because that was everybody's, like, first – can I ask Back you, to work was, uh, was Sean on that shoot? Yeah. Did you, was, <laughs> did you learn that he's afraid of the dark <laughs> <laughs> on that shoot? Because, so Sean is this Sean gaffer is, who's Sean amazing. Sean is our gaffer. He's incredible. I couldn't make my movies without him. Yeah. Everybody, like, he's the most he's in the demand. guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's the kind of guy that you book your schedule around. I do. I book my, I, when I book a movie, the first person I text is Sean. Yeah, I've tried to do the same, and um, I was trying to explain to Twist. He's like, it's funny because I was trying to explain to them. So I use Sean and Steve, and they're both great. Yeah. But those are like kind of the two like only like great yeah. gaffers. Yeah. And so when I was trying to explain to Twist, he said I like needed a bunch of time. Yeah. To like make these productions happen, they were like, "What do you what? mean? Like, what? Why?" Because well, Sean books out three months in advance. Yeah, they like why. couldn't <laughs> understand. And I remember you saying to me in our last conversation when you were like. You know, and they were surprised that I booked my whole movie around my gaffer, but yeah. I do. And I'm like, God, I feel like we all do that because yeah. there's so few of them in there's the so adult industry. Them. And you, I need, and you need them. I need one. Yeah. And I need a good one. Yeah. Because we shot a Tree to the Year and Joshua Tree. Oh, fun. And um, it was actually really funny because the sleeping quarters were a bunch of like little mobile homes. Okay. Like in this kind of like big desert space. And Sean was like, totally Sean was like not dog. a, yeah. Which is hilarious. Cause he's like this huge, like, like big guy, big, tough guy, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
And um, yeah, he's got, you know, tattoos on his neck and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But he's afraid of the dark. Yeah. Which was funny. Sorry, Sean, I called you out. Anyways. I don't actually think he has any shame about any no. of that stuff. I don't think he has all. shame about anything. Yeah. I mean, it no. was a shirtless Sean summer for us yeah. when it got really hot. It was very hot. We were in Idlewild. Oh. It was hot. Yeah. And when we scouted that house, it was like 70s and beautiful. And then mm-hmm. when we went there, it was like 90s. And we were like, oh, this, because it was like a hiking movie. We were shooting outside. Yeah. A lot. And I was like, I this was not the weather I was expecting. I'm so sorry. I know. That's I'm so rough. sorry I'm making you walk up and down this mountain. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you shot this movie. Shot this movie. movie. We shot two movies in Idlewild. Then uh, came back and started still doing like small cast stuff. And then it was turning into 2021 and Lust was talking about season two of Primary and – moving forward and how many movies they wanted. And I was like, I was having this internal conflict of like, I have these, all these scenes, like they're asking for more time than I have available. Mm -hmm. And then before I ever got a chance to be like, to to like have to figure out what I was going to do about that, Mm -hmm. they offered me my contract. Mm. And I was like, okay, that does free up my time. That solves my problem. Right, because you were still trying to direct for other people, For for Gamma. I was working for Gamma. I was doing eight scenes a month for Gamma-ish. Which is a lot. So, like, I was trying to do all of this at the same time. It was very stressful. I really felt like I didn't have time Mm -hmm. for what I was doing. And then they wanted more features, and I was like, features are a lot of work. Yeah. So then they offered me my contract, and I was like, okay. And I felt really bad emailing Brie and being like, I signing a contract with another company because she was the one who gave me my first job directing. Mm -hmm. She's very understanding and, you know, an amazing person. And that has been 2021. Wow. So tell us um, a little bit about Primary, the first one. The first one, sure. What the concept is, um, you know, maybe some of the most challenging parts of creating that movie, what you're the most proud of. Sure. And I know you, I believe you guys won some Avian Awards. We did. Too, we won so. some x Awards and some Avian Awards. And hopefully season two will win some this year. Gustavo was actually talking about how um, amazing as a Gustavo is my, my biggest fan, yeah. which is he wonderful. Was, yeah. We have a similar sensibility when it comes to filmmaking. Mm-hmm. So like he he gets what I'm trying to do, which, yeah. is, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Primary is a story about couples living in Los Angeles. It's mm-hmm. a very modern 2020 kind of story. It was like the first one was set in 2019 in real time. Mm-hmm. Um, story about couples navigating relationships and open relationships and polyamory. Mm-hmm. And uh, who did you have in it? Uh, so season one was uh, Anna Fox and Derek Pierce, who are my main couple. They came back for season two. Uh, the other couple in season one was Kira Noir and Small Hands. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also Penny Pax was my fifth lead in season one. Mm-hmm. And then season two, again, I kept Anna and Derek. Kira stayed with me. Uh, Small Hands came and did a cameo, which was really fun. Yeah. Um, and then I added uh, Victoria Vox and Cam Damage. Okay. And myself. Ah, that's a, a unique challenge, trying to direct and perform at the same time. How it was that? it was not my intention hmm. to put myself in – when I wrote season one, it wasn't – I didn't have this idea of how I was going to add characters to season two. I wasn't thinking about season two. I just put myself in the movie and did a little cameo because that was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for season two, uh, kind of inspired by the show Easy, I pulled – small non-sex characters from season one and did their stories for season two. Okay. So it was me and Victoria Vox Mm. who came to just play like a waitress in Mm -hmm. season one. Mm -hmm. And it's really fucking hard directing yourself. Mm -hmm. And I could not have done it if Bryn was not my cinematographer. Yeah. Because I don't think there's anybody else I would have trusted to tell me if I needed to do it again. Yeah. Or if something was wrong or to like look at the monitor and make sure – like at one point we had our, our tent for catering was in the background of a shot and like very easily could have been missed had no one – like I didn't see it. I looked at the monitor and I didn't yeah. see it. But like he looked at the monitor and saw it and we could slide it over 10 feet to the left and yeah. make sure it wasn't in the shot out the window. Right. 
Um, so like stuff like that, like I don't think I could have performed not trusting someone innately behind the monitor. Right. You know, it's funny about that. I just remember I gave myself a cameo in the movie I directed you in. Um, yes. Yeah. For, for Wicked. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I was so bad. <laughs> I am like, truth be told, I'm the worst actress. I'm really terrible. And the only reason I put myself in there was because I didn't want to pay. I didn't have the budget. Yeah. With Wicked, I was fighting with them constantly about money. Like, holy shit. I've never had a company who was like that type of about money, yeah. Um, And so I put myself in just because I couldn't afford an extra. But holy shit, I was so terrible. And also another hilarious thing is, Mm -hmm. is I can't remember lines even if I wrote them. Yeah. Like I cannot remember lines. And I just remember like looking at the edit and just being like, oh my God, who let me put myself in the movie. So we did, (laughs) we did this for season two of primary. We made this little social media video of like, who's who. So like, who was always late to set? Who was always, who's the funniest? Whose laugh is the most contagious? And like one of them was who has the most bloopers. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, I think it was Casey. (laughs) (laughs) It was like for sure. There was one, one scene we were shooting at this really great restaurant bar location. Mm-hmm. It had like two lines and I just could not. And I, like, again, these are lines that I wrote for myself to say. And I just could not do it. And I could not remember because April O'Neil came and did a small part in the movie for me and I could not remember the name I gave her character. <laughs> in this moment, sitting here right now, it's not Madison. Madison is what I kept saying that was wrong. <laughs> Madeline. It was Madeline. But I kept saying Madison. But it's like one of those. Over and over and over. It's one of those things <laughs> when you get somebody's wrong name in yeah. there and like it gets implanted in your yeah. psyche. Like you can't. I have a similar thing with Lucas Frost. So when I first, when Lucas Frost was brand new to the industry, mm-hmm. I cast him I cast somebody else in a role of a guy named Julian. Okay. um, For a digital playground movie. Okay. That guy flaked out and and Lucas Lucas came came in and filled in that role. And I don't know what it was. I think I was also like brain dead from all the shooting, but like I associated that name with him. With him. So you want to call him Julian always. So I wanted to call him Julian always. And fucking to this day, it's been like, five yeah. years. Yeah. I still call him Julian. And, and like, but he has to just know that like, that no, he knows. It it's yeah. like a joke now, yeah. you know? And I'll be like, Hey Julian. And he'd be like, hey, hi Holly. Holly. Yeah. And I'm like, I know your name yeah. is Lucas. He's like, I know, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like one of those weird, like your brain yeah, just, just, just stuck. like stuck on it. And like, I know a Madison and I just wanted to like, it's just like, kept, and I was just, and like ever, like it would, I knew I was wrong. Mm-hmm. So I was blowing takes before the name came out, because I was introducing her. Like, I was mm-hmm. introducing April to Anna, and I was like, this is – it was like, Abby, this is Madeline. Yeah. Madeline, this is my friend Abby. And I was blowing the take before I even spoke. Because you knew Because you I say knew I was going to say it wrong. And I – April and I walked back and forth into that bar and out of that bar and into that bar and out of that bar probably 15 times before I t- did a take that I didn't despise. <laughs> but, like, it, there's a lot going on when you're – directing and yeah. performing and like yeah. there's a really fun bts shot of me sitting in bed naked holding my holding the monitor because <laughs> i'm like acting and looking at the shot at the same time which is also very strange you go to like be like what is that oh that's my body <laughs> <laughs> yeah you also shoot camera too right i do and how is that for you i, I mean, love that's it. exhausting it is but it's exhausting. also kind of like because because I also shoot camera too. I direct. It depends on the shoot. Sometimes yeah. I direct and I don't shoot camera. Sometimes yeah. I direct and I do shoot camera. It's hard to not when I'm not shooting camera to not just grab the camera out of the cameraman's hands and be, and like, be like, "This, this is, is what, I what I want. This is what I want." Yeah. So even though it's more work, I feel like sometimes it's easier to shoot camera yourself. Yeah. I so I have never direct uh, for lust. Mm-hmm. I have never directed a sex scene that I also have not shot mm-hmm. or been in. Mm-hmm. I had to hire somebody else to be second camera for the sex scenes when it was me in the sex scene. Right. We shoot all the dialogue single camera, which is my preference. I don't I don't want to run two cameras at the same time. I like I like things to play in one as much as possible. It's kind okay. of my aesthetic. So mm-hmm. I we often do just, you know, a couple of takes with a single camera cuz I'm not going to use the singles. 
Like I'm not going to use an insert. There's no reason to waste time shooting it. I don't like them. Okay. Um, so we shoot that all single camera, but we shoot the sex two cameras just to make editing easier. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love it. I get to shoot what I want to shoot mm-hmm. because Bryn is on the other camera and I know, and he has a wider, or he has a, he has a, he has the wide shot. So you're the close up. I have the close up. So I know that he has what we need mm-hmm. and I can do things like people's hands grabbing comforters or people's hair, people's, I'm not usually as tight enough to be like people's mouths or people's eyes, but I'll do like people's feet or like stuff that's interesting and pretty or like I'll, fo- I'll like manipulate focus and just like fuck around with it. Mm-hmm. And it's so much fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so much fun. Yeah. It is, it is also like absolutely exhausting and that camera is incredibly heavy. What camera do you shoot with? We shoot on C300s. Oh God, those things are so <laughs> I shot a movie. I filled in for Mike Quasar when he had a flu once and I shot that camera for Joanna Angel. And I was like, so where's the tripod? They're like, what do you mean? Yeah. It's all handheld. I'm like, what? Well, yeah. Oh my, we I was have rigs. dying. We have easy rigs. I didn't get any of that. Um, I couldn't actually. When we had C200s, mm-hmm. Uh, I would handheld because I like to like squat on the ground or prop it on my knee or like pick it up and put it on my shoulder and move okay. it all around. But I just can't. It's it's also like too expensive a camera for me to fuck around with it like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Like I need to not be throwing it around. Like our glass is too expensive. I need to not be like swinging it all around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I need to be a responsible cameraman. Mm-hmm. And so like I can't like throw the camera around anymore. So put yeah. it on the rig. Yeah. Um, and it's still like I have to wear a back brace. Yeah. Um, it is what it is. It's like part of the job. It's so much fun. Yeah. I mean, then that's, you know, a lot of directors don't also shoot camera. So that's and that, I feel like that's such a unique advantage to be able to do that as well, because then it like really gives you so much control over the final product and you understand yeah. like what you're shooting more. Yeah. I also I probably would. I would want an earpiece or something Mm -hmm. to communicate to my camera operators, like, get this, get this, get this. And that's that's so, like, making that technology work and not interrupting performers. Like, I've been on sets where they try to use an earpiece and it becomes, like, you can hear it just enough as a performer to be Mm -hmm. like, what is going on? Yeah, it's funny because I was just talking to my DP about getting one of those for when we shoot with the Reds. Because when we shoot with the Reds, I usually don't shoot camera. Yeah. But, yeah, I want to be able to tell people what I want. Yeah. Um, but we haven't invested in that yet, but it sounds like it's not really going to work. It works if you have the money to spend on the really nice earpieces that work really, really well. Yeah. That's a no. That's the thing <laughs> is the like <sighs> prosumer earpieces. Yeah. They like, I was on a set once and they were using them and like halfway through the scene, the earpieces stopped working and we actually like stopped fucking to yeah. fix the earpieces and yeah. like they became a problem. Yeah. And so just like I know. It's like all those little It gets really hard. I would much rather problems. just like get really sweaty and hold the camera myself. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So you won a couple of AMs and Expizes for primary one. Um, I did. Which ones did you win? Uh we won best all girl group scene and uh Kira Noir won best supporting actress. That must have been really exciting. Which for was you. very oh she it, so it was the uh was this past 2020 mm-hmm. AVN and so it was the live stream and she actually called me and she was hosting. Oh. So she called me and was like screaming into the phone. Oh. It was it was like a highlight of my whole life that she was like calling, screaming into the phone and then like they're playing the scroll and while I'm on the phone with Kira, I also won for directing a it was like best parody directing for Cougar Queen, which was a project I did for Girls Way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then, like, I was like, oh, my God, I just went to – and, like, more screaming. And yeah. it was just, like, really very, very incredible. It was, like, awesome. kind of my favorite AVN experience Was it? So were far. you kind of, like, more excited for how excited Kira was? Oh, absolutely. I was then, – then that I won myself 100%. I was so excited that yeah. Kira had won. That must have been a really nice feeling. Um, so then you went on to make Primary 2. Yes. So tell me about that. We shot Primary 2 this past March and April. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had a 12 day shoot. Mm -hmm. Uh. How many scenes? Six scenes. Okay. Six sex scenes. Six episodes. Uh, each episode is between a half an hour and an hour long. There isn't really a set 
episode length, each one has about 15, 10 to 15 minutes of story. Mm -hmm. And then the sex scene and the sex scenes vary wildly in length because I just let performers do the thing. Do the thing. Yeah. Yeah. My, my rule is stay in character. Right. Do, do, do sex. Right. If you're going for like an hour, I'm probably going to tell you to wrap it up. Yeah. Otherwise, like, do just, sex. Just because, like, when you're ready to finish. By the hour. Yeah. When you're, when you're, yeah. When, and also, like, I really can't do, like, an hour long sex. Like, lust doesn't want in a sex scene that long. Yeah. But otherwise, like, do, do sex. Mm-hmm. Put body parts together however you want to. Right. We do, a, we actually do a really, really long consent talk at the, before we set sex scenes. And, like, I have a whole, like, you don't need to open up. And when I say that you don't need to open up, I actually mean that you don't need to open up. This could be an entirely soft core sex scene and I don't care. Interesting. Okay. So for those of you who don't know what that means, opening up to camera means that like basically you're kind of shifting on the hip, Mm -hmm. making it so that the camera can see the penetration. Yes. Um, or like the tongue against the vagina or the penis in the vagina. The hardcore, whatever. what we would call like hard the hardcore hard footage. And it is definitely something that has been ingrained in us as directors from and as the performers. Start. From, and performers. From, like one of the very first things you learn how to do as a porn performer is open up. Right. In a way that looks natural. Right. So, I mean, when, like, did Erica tell you when she kind of hired you she was like we don't care about penetration and that was one of my one of what what, like back to doing primary one and like as a director in general I try to replicate the experience that I had in Spain working for Erica on Mm -hmm. my sets and that was one of the things that was my experience in Spain was like you and Michael Vegas like have fun stay in character Mm -hmm. don't don't do something the other person doesn't want you to do Mm -hmm. but like stay in character do sex I don't care if I see it or not. Wow. Was that hard to, cause I know that for me, if someone said that to me when I was shooting, it would be so hard for me to get myself out of that must show penetration mindset. Like, did you struggle with that? As a director, as a performer, as a director, uh, no, as a director, it's amazing. Wow. I haven't been directing long enough to have it so ingrained as a director. Right. Okay. When, what about as a performer, as a performer, uh, the first time I re- I did it was with Michael, and Michael is such an incredible performer that it was actually very easy. I find that some of the performers I hire are better at it than mm-hmm. other performers I hire. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the performers I hire just open up. Mm-hmm. They just do. Mm-hmm. It's just what happens. But as long as it continues to look natural, right. it's fine. Like, like uh, in primary season one, I have a scene with Anna and Isaiah. Mm-hmm. And they did reverse cowgirl, Mm -hmm. but it looked real and they were Mm -hmm. on a sofa. And so like it looked, it matched what their characters would do in that moment. So it was Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. But so like, just like some performers just like do it. And then I also, I hire a lot of indie performers and a lot of amateur performers Mm -hmm. and they're often really like, they don't, no one's ever taught them to open up. So they just don't. Do you find it challenging to hire people who aren't like in kind of the mainstream porno sphere? Uh, provides different challenges, Mm -hmm. but I'm also incredibly selective. Like I, I choose my cast. I work with Lust and their producing team with about who goes in the movies. Like I get cast approval for sure, Mm -hmm. but I don't get a casting list Mm -hmm. like a lot of other directors do. Yeah. So I will pitch people and I have everybody audition. Like I actually will make people for primary season when we did in-person auditions Wow. and then COVID. And so now I make people tape auditions and it's one of the, if they don't take the 10 minutes to tape me an audition, like I'll give people a week. It's not like I need you to do this today, but like if they, especially when it's someone I don't know yeah, who was like reached out on Twitter and been like, I want to be in your movie. I'm like, okay, make me an audition tape. Yeah. And if they can't take 10 minutes to make me an audition tape, that says a lot to me about their dedication to the project. Yeah. I was, and that's like, that's more important to me than somebody's skill level, whatever that means. Yeah. I was going to say like, I could see on one hand that providing the challenge of like, okay, that's probably going to weed out quite a few people who Mm -hmm. don't want to take the time to Mm -hmm. do that to say like, I'm an established performer. Like everybody knows me, like I'm not going to do this for you. But then it also, like you just said, kind of weeds out people who may not be, have the kind of attitude that you want on set to like make the movie that you want to make. I would rather have someone who has a smaller social media following and, and isn't someone you would consider like a famous porn star Mm -hmm. who's 
excited to be there and yeah. a good actor yeah. than someone who is a very famous porn star mm-hmm. yeah. who, who doesn't give a shit. If it's someone who's a very famous porn star who does give a shit, then like, great, best of, best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. But especially with OnlyFans and people making money from other ways, it, it often like you get one or the other. Right. There's been like a couple of a couple of people who are both and like that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I find that um especially like as I get older and I'm more selective about the work that mm-hmm. I take, mm-hmm. I it's so important for me to have people on side who want to be there. Yeah. You know, it's just like there's nothing worse than shooting somebody who just doesn't care. Yeah. And who's just like phoning yeah. it in it, and it's it makes just like, it makes me if we're talking about a performer, like we're, it makes me almost feel bad from like an ethical consent perspective mm-hmm. of like, if I know that that person is there and doesn't want to be there, it yeah. makes me feel gross yeah. that I'm like making them have sex. Well, I feel like there's a difference though between someone who doesn't want to be there because like they genuinely are in the wrong line of work and mm-hmm. they, and they're not comfortable with being a porn star, but they're doing it for that money. That is what I'm talking about. And then about. someone being who doesn't want to be there because they know they can make more money on their OnlyFans and they just don't care that okay about your time. I am talking about the former makes me feel uncomfortable from an ethical perspective. The latter is just like, then why the fuck did you take the job? Why did you take the job? Why are you wasting my time? Like why you're wasting everybody's time. Yeah. You're wasting my crew's time. But also like it's very important to me that my crew wants to be there. Mm -hmm. I have like and I'm still dialing it in, but like dialing in this crew of people who want to be there and are excited to be there and work well as a unit. Yeah. And it's like managing because like I have a crew of 20 ish Mm -hmm. for primary. My smaller movies have smaller crews, but for primary, we have like a full camera department and and an art department and, Mm -hmm. and a, you know, Sean has assistants. Sean has an assistant. Yeah. Oh my God. (laughs) No wonder I could never book him. It's like, I'm going to work with Casey. Casey gives me an assistant. Yeah. Sean, he's still, he's still just, he's, he's, I was going to say, he's he not good at still delegating. does everything himself. <laughs> he's not good at delegating, <gasps> but we give him an assistant. Yeah. Um, so you like I have this big like, crew. Just go out and get him like McDonald's because he hates like healthy onset food. <laughs> God. So uh, There's going to be so many people watching. It's like, who the who fuck, fuck is this guy, Sean? Sean you, need to have Sean, you need to have Sean come in and do a podcast. That would actually be awesome. I'm, I'm actually, I don't think he no, would do it. I think he would. You think he'd do I it? I think he'd do it. He, he, he does my BTS. If he's got – that guy's got stories. You should have Sean come do a podcast. That would be an incredible podcast. You know what's crazy about Sean too, by the way, people, is that he comes from a family of porn yeah. people. His dad is Dirty Harry. And if you go back and, like, look at, like – and then his cousin is, uh, like, TT Boy yes. and Talon. Yeah. Which is yeah. so crazy. Yeah. You, you, I think, like, Sean, Sean it does my BTS. So, like, I feel like he – might come do a podcast you should you might have to pay him <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably because he'll have to take a day gonna, off of he has work. to take a day off work sean yeah, like doesn't true. take a day off of work this yes we have an incredible caterer <laughs> carla lane does my catering she's so incredible she she remembers people's dietary restrictions i think she told you know what she kind of shoved that in my face the other day and by the way i love carla and if you haven't seen my interview with her go watch it but I saw her at Julia Ann's party and we were, yes. and she had catered that party Yes, and we were talking about her catering and she mentioned something about catering your shoots. And then she was kind of like, you can't afford my catering on your budget. I'm like, no, you I might can't. not do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Carla, Carla just, like, if we, if I shoot somebody tomorrow and then I shoot them a year from now, Carla will remember that they are dairy free or gluten free or whatever. That's she just amazing. like remembers. She's an, she does an incredible job catering. That's amazing. Sean will eat lunch with us like half the time. Yeah. And Carla considers that a win. Yeah. He but hates also, like, the food that he, I bring on set. He wants McDonald's. He like, does want McDonald's. And like sometimes he'll go down the street to the taco truck or like he'll go yeah. down the street to McDonald's and I let him and Carla battle it out <laughs> and they do their thing but it's always like oh sean 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 went back for seconds and then like carl's like yeah but also like we keep cheetos and chips and like yeah. we try to do a mix of all different kinds of food because some people want fruit and some people want a granola bar and yeah. some people want blaze yeah and yeah. we try to feed everybody yeah this is true it's very important to me to feed people like that's one of like oh my, my big like i could not make my movies without carla yeah yeah, it's crazy to me how many um, sets don't feed their 
crew or models. I mean, I just had, um, I interviewed Jules Blue here mm-hmm. um, before you came along and she was just talking about a set that she was on where they didn't give, they didn't have water. They didn't have water? They didn't have water and you they had her shooting have, outside. You have to have, were they in the middle of the desert she and she didn't s- plan? I don't know. I'm like trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. Like you go to, go to the, you can buy water at a gas station. Yeah, I don't know. Like you're driving to uh, your shoot and you're like, oh no, we forgot to get water. Let me pull over to the 7-Eleven and get some bottles of water. Right. Like there's like, you have to give people drinking water. I know it's crazy. But like, well, that was one of my, one of the uh, takeaways from my shoot in Barcelona was catering. Mm. It was just, there was a woman there all day long she didn't really speak english because it was spain yeah and just like put love into the food Mm -hmm. and just like the coffee was so good Mm. i was never addicted to coffee until that shoot like i mark that shoot as the point in my life when i became addicted to caffeine (laughs) because the coffee in spain was so good and she just like you'd go to her and be and she'd be like what do you want and like she'd make you a, a an espresso or a latte or mm-hmm. whatever you wanted. And there was like always food and they like brought snacks around. There was all, like whatever you wanted was there. And so we really try to do that. And if we're like, if we're having a day that's going longer than 10 hours, mm-hmm. we'll do dinner mm-hmm. or, you know, Carla will bring like tacos mm-hmm. or we'll do, you know, we like, we did churros once. Cause it was like, I knew the people, the, like the food was going to arrive after the sex scene was over and we were wrapped. So just like, yeah, bring churros and ice cream. Mm-hmm. Just like really, really try to feed people. Yeah. Feels very, very important to me. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Churros. Yeah. Those are like some of my favorite desserts. Yeah. Just like churros. We do, we, you know, we try to make everybody happy. Yeah. Sean is Sean. It's <laughs> <laughs> Sean's personality is just to be disapproving the whole time, but I love him. And but like, we all know, time, like deep like, down he's Sean met me when I was 21, mm-hmm. 22, I was 22. And I was a, like, I was a baby performer. Yeah. And Sean respects me as a director mm-hmm. and did from like, like day one when I like day one director, when I didn't respect myself as a director, mm-hmm. Sean respected me. So actually I have a question for you. Have you ever found um, that any difficulty with the way men treat you as a female director? Have you ever struggled, like had power struggles in that Um, way? Only in the I'm not retired as a performer. You Mm -hmm. can still book me to do a scene. Mm -hmm. I still do scenes. Mm -hmm. And there are people who once I started directing stopped hiring me. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I think I became too intimidating. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's kind of scary directing a director, right? Because you're yeah, like, and I get it. It's kind of like that imposter syndrome, yeah, like oh, they're gonna like, know. Oh, they know. Yeah, they know. And they like know I this totally, is a bad angle. I totally, totally get that. When I Spiegler likes to tell the story, I was a brand new performer because I I had just graduated from film school. Mm-hmm. I would go on set and I would tell people like, you know, you should put that light over there; it'll look better. And like, so picture like a performer who's been in the business for like two months telling you like, you should put your light over there. And I actually, Spiegler called me one day and was like, you need to stop doing that. Like you need to stop telling people what to do. But were and you I was right? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't matter. That wasn't the point. Yeah. But like I was making, like I was giving people a reason to not hire me again. Right. I was being obnoxious. Yeah. Yeah, people don't like to be told. People don't how like to, do to be their told job. what to do, even if they're doing it wrong. Especially, but it, but like it, it's you know by by a, a new performer. Yeah, yeah. Like when I when I am directing, I appreciate if a performer would be like, by the way, there's like this problem, mm-hmm. or like your lens cap is on. <laughs> or like I think your tripod's not level. Yeah. And like stuff like that. I actually very much appreciate because like there's a lot going on and like if yeah. they notice something is wrong. Yeah. That probably means something is wrong. Right. And I'd rather them say something than than me waste time. Right. Yeah. But like I can see how like stereotypical man porn director and me being, you know, little 22-year-old baby performer that that being threatening. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely. so yeah, but like in terms of my crew, my crew I have always hired people who respect me. Mm-hmm. 
because I'm the producer and I get to choose who I hire. <laughs> so like I've never I've never had a problem with people being disrespectful to me on set. Right, right. That's good. Well, Casey, thank you so much for coming in. This has been yeah. such a pleasure. I feel like we never really got around to talking about primary two. We didn't um, really. We didn't. People will just have to go watch it. They'll just it. have to go They'll watch it. They'll have to go watch it. It's on lesscinema.com. So it is available. It is available. All six episodes are out now. You can go watch it. Maybe watch season one first while you're there. Might make season two make more sense. It's definitely a series. Keep the backstory. Yeah. Do you have any of those bloopers or BTS from those shoots as well? Like, oh, yeah. Can you see the yes. 15 takes you can, of you saying Yeah, the it's name? on. It, there's, a, there's a whole BTS thing on Less Cinema. There's also some BTS on Less Cinema's Twitter and Instagram and my Twitter and my Instagram. And Do you have another there. movie coming up for them? Uh, we're about to do a Christmas movie. <gasps> we are shooting a Christmas movie. Speaking of Julia Ann, she's oh. going to be my lead. Wow. Yes, I'm very excited. I was going to say, because she hasn't really performed for people. She's very selective about who she'll shoot for. I called her and asked her if she wanted to be in my Christmas movie. Hmm. I love Julia. She's great. Yeah, so she's going to be the lead of my Christmas movie. That's It's uh, it's one of those situations of like, I'll tell you about my movie later. <laughs> Is that the one you're in the middle of writing yeah. right now? Yeah, I need to finish writing it. Like, I'm going to drive home and try to write a couple more pages of it. Okay. So today, it's like what I'm, podcast, what so I'm doing. <laughs> but yeah, so like we're, we're going to shoot, we're shooting a Christmas movie mid-October because, you know, got to make the Christmas movie in yeah. time to release the Christmas movie. Yeah. And you can't but take yeah. eight months editing this one. No, we have a workflow now that is, that is closer to like a one month to six week turnaround time. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, there'll be a bunch more after that. And like maybe, maybe primary season three. Mm-hmm. I have ideas. We'll see. Not ever primary season four, for sure. I need to, like, wrap it up. Okay. You don't want to jump the shark. No. But, like, maybe season three, wrap up everybody's stories. Yeah. Well, can you tell everyone where they can find you online for more information on Casey Calvert? Yes. You can find me on Twitter at Casey Calvert XXX, on Instagram at Casey Calvert, and those links and everything else at CaseyCalvert.com. Fantastic. And you guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Holly Randall. Yes, I'm back on TikTok. We're doing like little fun clips from um, my podcast. So go to TikTok.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. No, there's no like funny videos of me doing like stupid dances because I'm like, too old for that shit. <laughs> me too. I hate TikTok. <laughs> oh my God. You know what though? They have great like recipe and like health tip things. That's I what I look at. I can't. I can't. I go, I open the app, then it's five hours later and I wonder what happened to my day. <laughs> like I can't do TikTok. It, everything about TikTok presses all the wrong buttons in my head. Right. So I just have to be like, I'm not using this app. Yeah. I know it's good for promotion and like there's some great stuff on there, but I am not, I cannot. That's okay. That's what a social media manager is for. So you don't have to do it. <sighs> My social media manager actually told me, he's like, yeah, so if you just scroll through TikTok for 10 minutes every day, that'll really help with the algorithm and get you up there. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Uh, does that help with the algorithm? I'm I not doing I'm, I have like a thousand followers on TikTok. Don't, don't go follow, don't follow me on TikTok. I don't post there. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can also watch this podcast live like we are doing right now at my Patreon, patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. And obviously you can uh, support the show that way as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Since I've started working with Manscaped, they've really expanded on their product line. It's incredible. And if you get their perfect package, you will not only get ball toner and ball deodorant, but you will also get, of course, the electric trimmer a shed travel bag, and their boxer briefs, which are the most comfortable boxer briefs. You can get all of this for 20% off at manscaped.com by using my code HRU.